Hi, it's Darren here from Art by Darren, welcoming you to another Art Start Mixed Media Art class. Today we are going to make some Christmas decorations, so let's get started. <laughs> So I'm going to make my door wreath. I've got just a twig wreath, some hessian ribbon, some holly, not holly, sorry what am I saying, mistletoe, and just some leftover eucalyptus I have from another project. So let's get started. So firstly I'm just going to see where I want to place it. I'm going to do a fairly minimal uh, wreath. So this um, branches are really thick because each of those pieces is wired so I use some very heavy duty wire cutters to cut through it but it does make it easy to place it on the wreath. Uh, now I've just grabbed a gold butterfly and I've bent the leaves up a little bit and I'm going to grab some wire, some 24 gauge wire and just put a piece of that through. <clears throat> I tend to change my mind a lot with my decorations and things so I'm trying to uh, be a little bit more sustainable with it and uh, use wires so that I can undo things and, and use the same base again probably next year. So you can see it's really easy just to thread the wire through. You don't need to use 24 gauge gold plated wire like me. I've just got this out of my stash. Um, any thin wire will do. Uh, if, but if you're going to see it on the front, you you know, try and match it up if you can. So I'm just deciding where am I going to put this and I really don't know at this stage. So guess what, I'm just going to leave it there for a second. <laughs> and I'm going to grab some gold chain also that I had in my stash, but you can get this at the spotlight as well. It comes uh, joined at both ends, so you'll need to cut through one of the links to open up the chain as I'm just about to do here, boom, like that. And then I'm just gonna wrap that around the bottom half of the wreath as well. And that helps to keep the holly on. Um, just gives it a little bit of bling too, which I like. And so I'm grabbing some wire and putting that through the chain at the end. And that's how I'm gonna attach it to the twigs. And I'll do that at the back as well. Uh, just make sure that you do sort of twist whenever you put something in like this that you twist it really quite tightly holding the wire and you can see what I'm doing there and just twisting it right at that edge before I attach it as well. Oh, here we go, it's a close up of attaching the wire. It's all very technical isn't it? Not really. But just remember to tuck those ends inside your wreath as well. You don't want them scratching your front door. Though God, my front door is a bloody mess at the moment. Anyway, you'll see that later when I hang this on the front door. It needs painting and I really don't like it. But anyway, the wreath makes it look a little bit better. So here I'm just shoving some of that eucalyptus in between the twigs. I didn't have much of it left, so it sort of filled in some gaps. And I'm adding a ribbon with the hessian ribbon. I'm just measuring sort of what size I want. I'm going to put it down the bottom, not at the top like it usually is. So just cutting that and folding the edges in. And I'm going to get the dreaded glue gun out. Here it is. Oh, I hate this bloody thing. I will buy a new one <laughs> these days, but I just don't use it enough. So I've just, uh, if you saw that there, I just um, wove some of the wire between, um, I forgot how to talk, hang on a second. Uh, I wove it in and out on the ribbon and that's how I made a very quick and easy ribbon and then put some more hessian around the middle of it. And it also makes it easy for me to attach it I did fray just the edges of the middle part of the ribbon and the bottom of the ribbon as well. And now what am I doing? Oh, that's right, I'm putting my butterfly on. I did end up putting two butterflies on. It just looked a bit lonely by itself, so I did put another one on later. All right, now I'm gonna make a hanger, which I should have moved the whole wreath so that I could do it and of course I burnt my fingers again didn't I just right there and here we go and I'm gonna burn my fingers again there we go now it takes me three times burning my fingers before I actually move the wreath and put this down on that bloody table like you should do so glue and then use something else to press it down like I just the end of my pair of scissors 
but you can see I've tucked the ends in there and just you know you can do this any way that you like I just wanted to make sure it wasn't going to fray and joining that together with some hot glue and wrapping it around the top there now I'm going to make some tails for my bow again you can do this any way you like I'm just going to put everything in half and just leave the bottom sort of four or five rows not glued and you'll see here that um, we're just going to fray it by pulling those layers out there and then running some glue along where it, that it stops just to stop it totally fraying off you can see that there and I'm going to use those little bits of the ribbon that I've tied into a little I don't know what do you call it a little bale there I'm going to use that later on as well in another project you'll see that in a minute so here I go I've woven the wire through the top or well, halfway down the um, tails of the ribbon again and I've decided just to fray the bottom of that ribbon so I've just cut that so you can see the fray there fiddling with some more eucalyptus and there I've hung it overnight <laughs> you can see it looks a little sad um, it's always good to if you're gonna hang something like this that you sort of let it hang somewhere where no one can see it for a minute so that you can work out what's going on with it uh, I did end up putting a little bit of a little bit more wire into the top of the ribbon just to catch it onto the holly as well and here's my lovely front door isn't that gorgeous yes there's our wreath <laughs> Okay, so I've got a couple of these tree forms, these styrofoam cones. I think I've got these ones at Leancraft. And um, I was fiddling around with this with our Christmas cards last week, and I thought, you know, it's actually made to go on rounded, um, rounded objects. So I thought, yeah, that looks okay. It is going to look better than that, but we'll leave that one for the moment. What we're going to start on is this one. So I've got a piece of chiffon here and what I'm going to do with chiffon you can rip it. So I'm going to cut pieces about an inch wide, two centimeters wide. So you just cut the first little bit and it makes a lovely sound. But as you can see, you can just rip it the whole length. This is I just bought quarter of a metre, half a metre of this, and you can see it gives you this lovely ribbon. It's a lot cheaper than buying chiffon ribbon. And I'll probably need three or four of these pieces. I'm going to wind it round, reattach it with a bit of uh, a bit of hot glue, <laughs> the dreaded hot glue, and then just wind it around. So let's get into it. So I'm just winding that around and around and attaching it in layers with um, some hot glue as we go up. You can see the hot glue through the chiffon. And then here is where I bumped my camera. And you possibly can't see what I'm doing, but I'll tell you and show you at the end what I've done. So I've just gone around. I really like that sort of frayed look with the chiffon. And here I'm making a little star, really simply, just with some hot glue on all the points of the star. Oh, I don't think I need to explain to you how to make a star, do I? Um, you just do a triangle to start with, glue that together, and then do the bottom piece to the top and the top piece to the top and you do it like that that makes sense doesn't it <laughs> okay I've put some gold paint on this I um, if you're going to paint anything in a lighter color and you're going over a dark one like that it's always good to put some white first and then you'll get a true color showing through at the end so back to uh, oh here we go this is the paper one that I did as well just stretching it around so that it's open, that so that the cells of the paper are open, glued it down at the back and added that little hessian doodad that I made and glued that onto the top. 
And with the chiffon one, I've just wrapped some chain around again. <clears throat> and with these little crystal butterflies, I've just put some wire through those to hang them on again. So I wanted to show you a few different um, alliterations of it. Alliterations is the right word. Anywho, so I just used some scraps of the brown paper again to sort of look like chains on the trees to get that kind of look. Not sure if it really works or not, but hey, I thought I should show you. You can use anything that you've got that you can wrap around a form. If you like it, you put it on your tree. It's your tree. You do you. So, oh, you possibly didn't even see on that one that I put some butterflies on. I'm just using pins actually to hold um, the cords and, and what else, uh, ribbons and stuff that I'm putting on just so that I can change it to show you as well. But there I just, it's used some macrame. Um, sorry, macrame. What a macrame. No, that's American. I don't know. Cord that I tied knots in. And I added the star to the top of the other tree by gluing it to a toothpick and pushing that in at the top there as well. So here we go. Here's what it looks like with the butterflies. There's that one look there. And there's the other look that we just did with a bit of chiffon ribbon and a little gold butterfly. So next we're going to make a garland. So using the ribbon again, we're just going to grab one of the, or two of the threads in the middle there and just start pulling and when you're pulling you push the rest of it down and it frill like this this is how you do a gather and then i snaked it back and forwards on my desk just so i could see where everything was and placed my flowers now just to show you how i did these this was some old red flowers that i had some phenolopsis orchids and I've just put a couple of coats of titanium white. Titanium white is your strongest white that you can get. It does have really good coverage. Um, and Matisse is a really good brand too. They've got, they put lots of pigment in their paints. So I'm just using our holly again, uh, just cutting off little bits of the leaves, making a little centerpiece there, wiring it on uh, over the middle there and just balancing it out using the hot glue to attach the flowers and using a little bit of wire that was on the end of the leaves to push those through and tie that onto the hessian. Now I've got the ribbon again and I'm just going to hold it in my hand and keep making loops. And this is a simple bow. I think I can get five or six loops out of this length. Yeah, how many was that? I didn't count. Anyway, again, wire in the bottom of those and just pushing those in between the flower sections. So just making more of those ribbons and attaching them with wire. And still making ribbons. I'm trimming off the edges of the ribbons there. And there they all are. So I just grabbed some of these loose little balls that I had flying around, the little holly balls. Mistletoe bowls, well, I call it holly again. Oh, it's just going to be in my head the whole bloody time, isn't it? Okay, so I had some mistletoe and some of the white balls popped off and so I put them into the middle of the bows to make it look a bit like flowers. So here it is on my dining room table. I just thought I'd lay it out somewhere where you could actually see it all. Um, I've actually put it over my fireplace and my fireplace is weird. They put the flue in front of the mantle. It's the weirdest thing. See, look. Boom, big black thing. <laughs> it's hard to dress. But anyway, I put it across the top of the mantle to start with. And you'll see later I moved it. So next we're going to make a heart ornament or a heart garland. You can turn this into a garland too if you want to. So just drawing half a heart is the easiest way to do it. I've got some recycled paper here and cutting that out to make a pattern. And you can see that's the stitch line there as well. So getting our ribbon, I did eyeball the ribbon to make sure that I wasn't making a heart bigger than the actual ribbon and I folded it over so I can cut two out at a time and pin that in place. I, I chop it off to cut things out, it just makes it easier. I can pick it up and 
turn the piece around so it helps with my hands. And here we have our two pieces of hessian. Now because it's see-through we're going to need something underneath it. Otherwise all the filling's going to pop out through the hessian. So I've just got a little bit of calico. Again cutting two pieces out at a time. And so I've got two hearts. I've got two of the hessian and two of the calico. And we're just going to sew this. There's lots of different threads that you can use. I think I'll show you a few here. <coughs> uh, there's like, you could use that gold embroidery thread. I am going to use my self threading needles. Um, I'll show you how they work in a minute. They're fabulous. There's embroidery thread, there's gold thread, cream thread, white thread, whatever floats your boat, whatever your colours are, you can use that. I'm going to use some embroidery thread and it comes in six strands. So you want to peel three strands off so you get double your thread, which is great. It's the easiest way to uh, sew embroidery. So you just hold the thread over your fingers like so. You can see that burn on my finger from that one glow. And then you just push, look, push. No more looking for the eye of the needle. It's very easy. I'm just going to tie a knot in the end of this and thread it in between the two. So I'm going through the top two layers, but that, that knot's going in between, so I hide my knot. And I'm just doing a very simple straight stitch all the way around until I get to where I've got my pins and that's I'm leaving a gap there because we need somewhere to be able to fill the uh, the heart up. Now I decided that I wanted to add a little sort of snowflake in the middle and I thought oh yeah that's great and then I sewed the middle together so look even we experienced sewers who've been sewing for 40 um something keys <laughs> Uh, we make mistakes too, so you just um just unpick it and start again. So I pick, re-thread, put my hand in between this time so that I could make sure I didn't sew through all the layers, and just going from the centre out, forming a little cross, and then forming another cross in between to get that sort of little snowflake look on the front. So I've pulled that out to the bottom of my heart again. Now I'm just trying different little things to see what's going to work. I ended up deciding on the jingle bells and some of the mistletoe leaves. And this is the soft fill that I've just got in my stash. And I've just stuffed that and then closed that off again. I'm sewing that little hole closed and then... I think you can see it there where I um when you finish going around and you've knotted your thread then you can just go back into the middle and then come up through the top cut your thread very close to the fabric and it will pop back inside and you'll have no loose ends anywhere and you see here just using the pinking shears to get that lovely sort of little zigzag edge on all these because I'm leaving that edge, I want that frayed look. And adding the jingle bells and then I decided to add some uh, cream ribbon on top. Because still at this point I was still undecided whether I was going to make a garland out of it or they were going to be Christmas decorations. So I sewed a little gold butterfly onto a couple of them as well. And that I did sew on before I even started sewing. And that's our heart ornament. I was playing around with the scraps that I'd cut off while I was making those hearts and sort of piled them all together and now I made a star. So, yeah, I think I'm gonna need to grab, here we go, a chopstick. Mm, probably the wide end. Then in the middle like that. And then glue that. Okay, what am I going to do with this? Mm -hmm. So I hot glued those together and put 
chopstick in the middle and then just sort of glued around the edge. I did decide to put another triangle on the front and the back as well just to make it look a little bit neater. And I auditioned some bling for the front but I putting it on the tree I should have put more bling on. I should have done the four like I did there. Tried some ribbon, tried a few different things but ended up just putting one butterfly on and then this ribbon which was actually a really great way of attaching it to the top of the tree I just put a little bit of rib uh, glue on the ribbon there but I could undo that when I got to the tree and just wrap that ribbon around the chopstick and the tree which kept it on there as well and if you've never made jingle bells before that's how you do it you just thread them all on a string while I was looking at my stash as well I saw an angel there and I thought you know what that's what I'm gonna make so I got the mistletoe balls on the wire a little triangle of or two triangles of the hessian for a dress a little bit of the scraps for arms put them together in prayer and put a butterfly on the back for her wings and these are just great little uh, gift toppers you can uh, put that on with your gifts so, oh, I also put a little gold ring on top for her halo and I think the second one I made I did it with just a little bit of gold embroidery thread <laughs> and I also did ribbon on the second one just so her arms were a little bit neater but you can see there these gorgeous little angels that you can put on to any gift just to bling it up just a little bit there we go on recycled sustainable goods and here's my little lounge room so far in all the wooden stairs there in the background they're coming out very soon but there's our tree that i got out of our garden which is going to go back in the garden these are also some of my favorite christmas decorations santa and his little angels that i've had forever and here's just a mantle in the dining room that i shot that i'd show you and if you haven't watched the christmas card Mixed media, I'd start mixed media Christmas cards that I made the other week. I'll link that so that you can see that as well. So that's everything from me. If I don't see you before Christmas, I hope you have a wonderful Christmas and a happy new year. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.